Thanks for tuning in to Be Kind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. And today we have the ever so talented actress and vegan investment guru, Daniela Monet. Now, Daniela prides herself on being an ethical mom entrepreneur of two and being a powerful leader in the investment sphere. She's the co-founder of Kinder Beauty Box, a vegan and cruelty-free brand beauty subscription box that has been ranked number one by USA Today Reader's Choice for the last two years running. And what an absolute pleasure it is to have you on the show, Daniela. Oh, thank you for having me. This is really exciting. And FYI, we need to give a shout out to our V Kind social media specialist and community manager, Allie Bronner. She emailed you because she is your biggest fan. So That's hi, awesome. Allie. Hi, Allie. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. This is really cool. Now, I had the experience of meeting Daniela at the most recent Vegan Women's Summit held in Los Angeles on April 8th, and you were just a really powerful panel speaker. Um, so I, I kind of want to open up with that. What got you involved with that summit? Good question. Well, if you know Jenny, who started the summit, um, she's a go-getter. She's awesome. And she's just a really great networker. She's someone that I um, have known for years now and um, have been lucky enough to work alongside in past summit of some, well, I guess, yeah, past summits of hers, um, mostly via like um, online or virtual. So this was like really exciting. It was really fun. And there was such a great um, energy there that I just can't really even put my finger on. It's just like being surrounded around a lot of people that um, have common interests who are super supportive um, and just, yeah, it was a special opportunity. It was vibrant. It was safe and it was just sexy. It was just so exciting to be a part of that. And, um, but you know, before mom, 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 entrepreneur life, as you call it, <laughs> came your acting life. And, yes. and for those of us who know you, Daniela Monet, as a household staple, thanks to her roles on Nickelodeon, on Zoe 101 and Victorious, where you worked alongside music mogul Ariana Grande. Um, and of course you're, long-standing work in film. I don't want to drop that because that started off with Nancy Drew in 2007, which was one of my favorites growing up and to your most recent read lead role, right? In 2022 with the Aloha Surf Hotel. So you are a woman who stays busy. <laughs> how, how, how did you shift your focus from acting towards vegan invest towards the vegan investment sphere? Well, um, I think I was born into a family um, who have very similar entrepreneurial spirits. Um, and acting to me was really cool, but it was very much in a very different bucket. And it was, it's something for me that I love and it's like a passion of mine, but it's not something I necessarily can control. Um, and so I looked at opportunities that I had more control in and, um, and that for me was looking at investment opportunities. And that started at a young age, um, where I just really simply started investing in myself. Um, I think I spoke about this on the panel, but it really is pretty simple. I, I knew how to make money at a young age. And that meant if I had to pierce someone's ears or cut someone's hair or sew a bandana to make clothes or go to Smart and Final and buy chocolate bars and sell them door to door, host lemonade stands, garage sales, all the things, um, I knew how to invest in myself in order to make a little bit of money. Um, and then as I got older, I realized there was a lot other opportunities out there. I took some courses at a local community college on stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and realized, you know, I'd been acting for a while and I had a little bit of money saved up. And so I put a little bit into the stock market a little bit. Yeah. I just, I think for me, like I need, I was always looking for security and I always knew that, um, it didn't mean it was in one place, like having multiple streams of income, whether they're passive income or um, long-term investments, that's something that's always been a priority of mine. I I think I was, I felt like I was a provider at a young age. I don't know why, but like I have a younger brother and um, still to this day, like I look at my family and I want to do as much as I can for them. And then beyond them, I want to do as much as I can for um, other people and, um, animals and the environment. And for me, that's very much in line with investing in companies that are conscious and care. So that's where we're at today. 
That's beautiful. And what would you say was the most significant influence that impacted your career path to get you where, where you are today? Um, so a few people along the way really influenced, um, me in like a mentor position. One of them being Bill Glazer, who's the CEO of Outstanding Foods. That was the first startup company I ever invested what I felt was a significant amount of money at a time when I had a lot of uncertainty, but I knew one thing was certain is I believed in him and I believed in our chef, Dave Anderson, who I've worked alongside for years at a restaurant, um, in the Valley in Tarzana called Madeline Bistro it was one of the very first and only of its kind near me. Um, and it was like a high end vegan restaurant. And I had a lot of experience there and I knew how talented Davey Anderson was. And I knew whatever he was involved in, it was going to be something. Um, so when Bill and Dave came to me and um, they were looking for investors, I was one of the first to come on board. And that, at, that, at this point, it's been probably about six or seven years um, and ever since then, Bill's been someone that I've leaned on heavily in terms of support or contacts or um, just, yeah, he's given me a bit more confidence as an investor. And um, and I say, in addition to that, um, Jade Nicole, who I work with on our Sugar Taco franchise, or not franchise yet, but our Sugar Taco locations and soon to be the plant butcher. Um, she's also someone who I think is really, really strong and smart and savvy and, um, and very logical, very grounded. Like, I really look up to her. I think finding people that um, you see are doing something that you want to do is smart to have in your court. Absolutely. It's, it's about teamwork and collaboration. And I think when you look at the most successful CEOs and CFOs and presidents, you see that they are part of a huge conglomerate of support. And um, it's really beautiful to see that, particularly with Jade, because she is really about building the, the female entrepreneurship. And um, she's a mutual friend of both of ours. So it's, it's nice to yeah. give her a shout out on the show. But um, tell us a little bit more about these investment strategies. Like, how do you determine what is a sound investment? Sure. Um, I think it's changed over the years. I think initially I, I invested in companies that had substantial growth already that were already um, out there doing their thing, like things like Apple, Whole Foods, um, just Tesla, you know, um, and that's more of like a, you can watch that day to day. That could be a long term investment. But I think at this point, like I want to put money in companies that I am a consumer of first and foremost that I see um you know, the growth in the actual people running the company, I really wholeheartedly believe in every single thing I'm invested in today because of the people that are involved, first and foremost. Like, if it's not something that um, that they are 100% invested in, like time-wise, energy-wise, heart, soul, all of it, um, then it's going to take a lot of work for it to, to work out. And, um, and so luckily I've had a lot of good luck with that because I believe in the people behind all these projects. And then I think in terms of like what I'm looking for, you know, of course I want to return at some point. And I think, um, you know, some of them sooner than, than later, but ultimately I, I try not to invest anything I can't afford to lose. So, you know, my heart is pretty much the first thing that speaks to me. Um, I've always been someone who invested in companies that, um, that meant something to me. Like, I'm not just looking at the bottom line. That's beautiful. And you, you talk about investing in things that you consume as a consumer. So what inspired you to become vegan and how long ago did that happen? I've been vegan for almost about 23 years now. And oh my God. I, I know a long That's time. Amazing. I'm yeah, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the easiest road, but it was pretty awesome. Um, so I actually became vegetarian when I was five. And um, that was really inspired by a trip I took with my family to a dude ranch, like a working dude ranch. And I didn't really know what that was until I got there. And um, at five, you know, I mean, I have a two year old son. So now it makes a lot more sense to me. My, my son is so inquisitive. And if I were to tell him what I experienced at five years old, he would understand 85% of it. So at five years old, I was pretty um, inquisitive. Like I, I wanted to know, and I saw animals being mistreated. I saw what was like their version of a rodeo um, where they were, you know, tying up cows, dropping them to the floor, branding them. 
I saw just pain and, and torture. And, um, and I do remember at that point, um, also being invited to the cafeteria for a dinner and they served meats from animals that were raised on their land. And so I connected the dots very quickly. And that was like imprinted in my mind. Like, I feel like I was actually branded at that point. Um, and so I became vegetarian. I just basically said to my family, like, I'm not eating animals period. So I would just ask, is this an animal? Is this an animal? Is this an animal? Um, and then as I got older, a lot of things happened at the same time. So I was in fifth grade. So I was about 10 years old. My uncle was, um, dying of cancer. And, um, shortly before he passed, my aunt, um, brought in an, a vegan chef who used to work at, at I think at, at follow your heart. Cause I grew up near follow your heart, the original restaurant. And she created all these beautiful meals and would um, feed him. Um, and we were just all trying to learn about like vegan food. And, and at that same time, I was reading this book called Skinny Bitch, which I know the title is a little alarming, but really it's about factory farming and the business behind factory farming. So I'd already been vegetarian. I cared deeply about animals. My uncle was dying of cancer. He was then put on this vegan diet, diet like, you know, shortly before he passed to help him recover and heal and hopefully cure him. And, um, and then I, I learned about the business behind factory farming all in about the same time span. And that was it. Like, it was very simple for me. I knew right away, I, I could not support any sort of animal agriculture in that way. Um, and here I am 23 years later. Oh, that's so nice because you can see how much of your family life has impacted your lifestyle and your career. And does that, is, is your entire family vegan? Your immediate family? I wish. No. So, um, everyone is super vegan friendly. Supportive. Um, I never have yes. to worry. Yeah. Very supportive. Like I never have to worry about there not being options. Um, they respect my decision. They respect my, my, in my like family, my kids, um, Andrew. So that's not a, an issue at times. My family actually has gone vegan. Both of my parents were diagnosed with cancer around the same time. Both had breast cancer, my dad and my mom. Oh my and, gosh. um, yeah, really weird. So they had come to me at some point while they were going through their treatment, asking what they could do to, um, basically go vegan. And so that was like really cool. Um, and so I helped them with that. And ever since, I think they've been more conscious of what they eat. Um, but no one's entirely vegan except for my like four walls. So your husband, your children, you guys all follow a plant-based lifestyle. Yes. And and you have a really beautiful one out there in California, right? I mean, I think you, yeah. you really make the best of of what it means to rear a family in today's day oh. and age. So it's it's really beautiful to see. And if you guys aren't following Daniela Monet on Instagram, please do because she shares a lot of great stuff. Um, but away from the sappy stuff, let's get back to investment, right? Because at the end of the day, investing requires capital and you have lived a privileged, privileged life and you grew up with family that taught you about money. And um, what about people that don't have these experiences or for those candidates that we call cash poor? Uh, is investing not an option for them? I think investing should be an option for everyone. But yes, you're right. Like I had a lot of opportunity. Um, I didn't grow up in a family that was well off. We had what we needed. Um, but I knew what it was like to make a dollar stretch. Like my, yeah, yeah, very much so. You know, um, my, my mom would shop at the 99 cent store in like the sale aisle to get us lunch. Like it wasn't like, you know, we didn't have it all in, at our fingertips. Like I did some scrappy stuff to make sure that I felt like I was, um, comfortable, but it, it, those kind of people, let's say you are cash poor, those kind of people, because at some point in my life, I felt that way as a child, it instills a fire that like, I'm eternally grateful for. Um, I do not take money for granted, but I do believe in abundance for everyone. I do think that all of us have the means to have an abundance of money. And I really believe that it's a mindset. So maybe I grew up in a family that spoke a lot about lack, or I heard a lot about lack. Um, but I turned that away around and I, I knew at, at a young age, I didn't want to feel lack and I don't want anyone in the world to feel lack. So how yes. can I help? Um, 
so yeah, there. So I think in terms of feeling cash poor, um, a little can can go a long way if you're comfortable with. I read this book at a young age. Um, it was called The Automatic Millionaire by David Bach, and it's a great read. It's really easy. It's fast, and it's really fun because it sh- teaches you how at whenever you're ready, like and as young as you possibly can, how taking. X amount percentage of whatever you have, even if it's $5 and investing it in certain things, how at some point in your life, you could be a guaranteed millionaire. It takes a lot of discipline. So like number one, if you're cash poor, discipline is going to be your best friend. Prioritize like what you think should be the first thing that you spend your money on. Like for me, even personally to this day, like name brands aren't important to me. Um, I just, I have a lot of principles where I just don't feel comfortable spending money and I don't need certain things to look or feel a certain way, even in terms of like flashy cars, you know, not important to me. Right. Um, Things that just over time don't appreciate. I mean, certainly there are things that you need to just feel good about yourself and make you feel like you, you know, worked hard, but like depreciating assets aren't something that I care too much about. So um, prioritize what you're going to spend your money on, prioritize your health because health is the key to actually being wealthy. I truly believe that living a clean or mostly clean vegan diet is going to save you a tremendous amount of money in the long run. Um, you know, keep your money in your pockets. You don't need to be giving that to the pharmaceutical industry. Like we know how to care for ourselves like intu- intuitively, I think best. Um, of course, there is a time and a place for all sorts of medicine, but I do believe that we should definitely look out for ourselves first and foremost. That is like, so I think like health is wealth um, and just be careful where you're spending your money because um, there are better places for it. And um, over time, you should you should see that working for you. Absolutely. And I love that you end with that because Hippocrates says it says it best, right? Let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food. And that is really what we need to start centering our, our world back around. And to do that, compassion starts on your plate. And mm-hmm. And it also starts with the products that you're selling and you're standing behind. And so I want to know a little bit more about Kinder Beauty Box. What really inspired you to co-found Kinder Beauty alongside Ivana Lynch and Andrew Bernstein? So I think we were all just three animal advocates that um, needed some clarity in the space. I think as specifically like a female in the entertainment industry, being in a hair and makeup chair often, um, not really knowing, you know, what is going on me and where it's coming from and, and that sort of thing. Like both Evie and I related on that and wanted to sort of disrupt the industry a little bit because if we're vegan and we are animal advocates and we don't even know where to start Um, and we don't feel like there's a clear message as to like this is what vegan means this is what cruelty free means this is what clean means like this is the products you should these are the ones you should trust like then clearly the masses won't so and then in addition to that like going back to to making a dollar stretch like i i even as a as a an actress who had you know more money than most like I didn't want to go to Whole Foods and spend $30 on a cream that, you know, I didn't know if it was going to work or whatever, like, and it's not like sustainable over time. Um, so kind of beauty is like the perfect, like, box for all needs you know you get it at a great cost you get to try products they're full-size products mostly and you get to see if you like it if if you don't it's an opportunity to gift things i do it all the time with some of my excess stuff um it comes to your door monthly so you don't have to think very hard we donate back to organizations that like we think are moving the needle in the animal advocacy space environmental space even human rights space um and we are mindful of the environment as well. So like our boxes are 100% recycled um, ingredients, even down to like the ink on our box. It's made of soy ink. Um, wow. Yeah, it's like little things like that. Like we wanted to pay attention to those details. And we have a lot of work to do still because the beauty industry does contribute a lot to waste. Um, but we rely on our partners to have the means to make those decisions. And so the more we can support these gr- better habits and these better practices, um, the more demand we can create um, to help them come to fruition. Absolutely. And what do you think really makes Kinder Beauty Box stand apart from the other competitors in the Beauty Box subscription service, aside from everything that you just said? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, no, I think that like, you know, a, we have a good thing going for us, but yeah, sure. There are other players in the space. Um, 
You know, unfortunately, sometimes it comes down to who's going to be the loudest. Um, and I think that we are that because of our community, our community, yes. even though they're not as strong as like, a, you know, uh, some of the competitors out there, you know, we're, we're small, but we're mighty and we're growing fast and they're loud and they're proud. And um, and that part makes us special because um, there's no better advocate than your actual customer. And when our customers are out there like spreading the word and like helping us convert more subscribers. Like that's like meaningful to us. That really, really, really speaks wonders. So we're grateful for our community. That's amazing. And you know, the plant-based sphere is only getting bigger. And for what would you recommend to people that maybe aren't vegan, aren't plant-based, but see the potential? in investing in this sphere. What are some key strategies you can recommend to them? It's interesting. Yeah. Um, there are certainly a lot of people that purely invest in it because they think that there's growth, um, there, you know, my, my, my advocacy in me wants to say, like, if you're going to invest in like anything in the vegan space, like you should you should be someone who lives by that messaging because that's only going to help give your money more value. Um, we have to practice what we preach. Um, secondly, I think it's smart. Like I would never tell anyone not do it, even if they're not vegan. I think that you're right. Like we need to put money into um, vegan companies because that's got to be the future. Um, there's no way around it. And I think it's a, a fairly safe investment. Obviously, there's going to be so many companies along the way. You really have to do your due diligence to figure out which one's the right one. Um, there's also a lot of like funds, and I don't want to speak to it because I'm not I'm not by any means a financial expert, but there's a lot of funds available now where you can go to um these like bigger companies that um, make investments that can take a small amount of your money and sort of diversify it for you. So you're not really investing in one company solely. You're investing in several so that in the event that there's, you know, ups and downs and things like that, they, they, the idea is that they balance each other out. Um, so maybe consider doing something like that. Uh, yeah. Eat V is a great one. Um, our friend Elizabeth Alfano, uh, who's the... Yeah, the owner of Plant Based Consulting. Yeah, she's uh, she just started the ETF uh, EV. So yes, yeah, she so did. Like forty different, forty different stocks that you can play with in there, and it, you just take a little bit of the risk off. So that's a great yep, suggestion. Totally, she's great. Yeah, she's so cool because she said the same thing to me. Like I was in the same boat. You know, like this is this is the entry level for so many people. Um, so I'm glad she's doing that. Yeah. So where do you see yourself five years from now? It's a great question. Not something I ask myself enough. I'm so funny. I'm like a big thinker, but also a very day to day thinker. Like I don't even like to know what's going on tomorrow. So in terms of five years from now, um, I mean, I want to be back on TV. So I, at some point I want to start, um, getting back into that world. I think because my kids are still so little, I've used that as a bit of a crutch because I just like being around and, you know, I'm still nursing my littlest. So I'm like, no, I can't yet. But yeah, that's, that's like what feeds my soul in a way that just, I can't explain. So that, and then my biggest goal right now is just getting as much capital as I can because I see so much opportunity. Um, and it like drives me nuts because I just want to be involved in supporting all of it. That is so amazing. And we are so excited to see what you have coming up in the, in the years ahead. And we know big things are coming for you, Daniela. So as always, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And uh, that wraps up this episode of VKind Connects with the amazing, vivacious Daniela Monet, who you will be seeing a lot more on TV and film. And to learn more about Daniela and what it's really like to adult like a um, MF, make sure to subscribe and listen to her podcast, Adulting Like a Mother Father, uh, available on Apple and on Spotify. And to access a curated array of the best vegan beauty products on the market, make sure to get your Kinder Beauty box today, only at kinderbeauty.com. And to watch this Be Kind Connects episode with Daniela Monet, subscribe to our Be Kind Vibes channel on YouTube. And to help you stay connected 
with us and the greater vegan community, give us a follow on Instagram at vkindapp. And don't forget to download the U.S.'s largest vegan search platform, Vkind App, today. In a world where cruelty is the main entree, Vkind Studios is serving up a new kind of culinary challenge. In each episode of Peeled, contestants face off to be named hottest vegan chef or get peeled into the compost. Tune in summer of 2022 as we cook up compassion. This season, color is in and cruelty is out. No plants felt pain in the making of this video.